Hallelujah. Yes, amen. How many is glad to be in God's house today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, we chant and we rant and we rave and we have a good time. But I want to do that when we're in the house of God. So I'm going to ask you again. How many is glad to be in God's house today? Yeah, yeah. started, I just want to thank each and every person that helped with the storm relief, those that were praying, those that were here, those that went after we were done and continued to help. Because I'm going to tell you something, it's not about what we did, it's about how God moved. You understand that? See, it's about how God moved. Because see, I prayed before we left here. And we started here, and then we went there. But then we wound up in two places where God, listen, he moved to every place that we went. But the last two places that we went, we were able to minister, we were able to feed, and we were able just to sit there and talk to not only just people, but workers. That's how God works. When you can get out and put some food in the belly of your military, your, your Red Cross workers and the people oh, in the Red Cross. Yeah. That's God working. Yeah. And you know how he works? He puts people right in front of you that's praying while they're in there. Yeah. See, God's got this thing completely covered, Brother Josh. I was watching something this week, and they said that Griffin, Georgia was number seven out of everywhere in the United States. Number seven for the most crime. Number seven. Now, you said, well, at least we're not number one. That's seven out of the United States of America. What better place for God to show up and show out in a mighty yes, way? Where it takes something like this to bring people together. Yes. But see, through the midst of the storm, he's purged some things to turn it around. Yes. God is working even in the midst. Amen. I'm going to tell you how God works. I'm driving to church Tuesday night, and I topped the hill right up here at the top of McDonough Road. And, you know, McDonough Road's a dangerous road if you're in a car, let alone if you're walking and it's dark and it's raining. And I topped the hill back here, and there was a lady in the middle of the road, and she was in a black car, and that car, well, she wasn't in the car when I topped the top of the hill. Where her car was in a ditch. And it was doing one of these right here. And I stopped. And she said, Pastor Shane? And I said, that's God sending me. At that exact second. Because there was somebody else that was here. Come right before us. And it wasn't there. That's how God works. We got that lady off the road. She got back home. There wasn't a scratch on her. Her car was fine. Everybody was good. But the community came together and helped. You know why? These are people just like you praying over this ministry. See, in the back, back here, I ain't started preaching yet, so y'all gonna have to put your seatbelts on in a minute. I just got some testimonies. This week, Thursday. Listen, I've been a basket case all week. My emotions have been up. They've been down. They've been in. They've been out. I haven't slept. I get two hours a night. I'm lucky. Sleeping pills don't work. It don't do anything for your pastor. I was up praying. And then Thursday morning, I got my wife to the hospital. And I am just beside myself. You see, I've known her 28 years. God blessed me 28 years ago for the God of woman. They took her back. They told me that it would take an hour, hour and a half, at the very most two. We got there. They took her back at 8.30. You know what time they got finished? Four o'clock. In my math, I went to Jonesville High School, but in my math, it's still not an hour and a half, two hours. And I was, I was up, I was down, facing the floor. I know people was watching me. But God used that situation. And I know that God allowed things and time zones.
to be set the way they were. Because, see, I kept my mouth shut because I was, I was praying. See, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. That's what my Bible says. My Bible says, pray. I was praying, Sister Pamela. I kept praying. I said, Lord, you keep your, your hands on my wife. Lord, the doctors, keep, keep your hands on the doctors. Keep your hands on the anesthesiologists. Keep your hands on the nurses. Lord, every instrument that touches her body, yeah. keep your hands on my wife. Oh, yeah. I guess there was a guy over there. He kept watching me. And he says, you've been here for a long time. And I said, yes, sir. And he got to talk a little small talk. He said, what do you do? I said, I heard him on the phone. I heard him on the phone talking. And he began to cuss like a sailor. And he began to use the words that you should be using. And I said, okay, Lord. This is you working. And he said, what do you do? I said, well, glory to God, I'm a pastor of a church over in Griffin, Georgia. He said, that's where them tornadoes hit, ain't it? I said, yeah. I said, but let me tell you how good God is. See, out of all the destruction, it kept the, the church perfectly clear. Out of all the storm damage, we stood tall. Out of everything that hit, the people in the church survived the storm. Everybody in the church was storm damage free. They could get out of their homes. They could go in their homes. They had electricity in their homes. They was able to sleep in their homes. Because God was working in the midst of the storm. Yes. He looked at me and he said, What kind of preacher are you? I said, Well, let me tell you how we do it in our church. We let God take over, we let God take control, we let God rain down the Holy Ghost, anointing fire on the sanctuary and his Hallelujah. people. We let God do what he's going to do best. And we get out of the way. Because when we get out of the way and we take us out of the equation, things change. Amen? Because we've learned to see. I know y'all don't know what that big old eyeball is up there on for. Up there for. We've learned to see with our spiritual eyes. We've learned to listen with our spiritual ears. And hallelujah, we've learned to use our spiritual mouth. But I began to tell him, I said, we let God take over in our services. He said, yeah, I understand that, but what belief are y'all? Y'all like Baptist or y'all... Are y'all Pentecostal? Are you holiness? Are you are you Catholic? Or I said, yeah. He said, yeah, which one? I said, check, 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 check. He said, what's the name of you? I think they aggravated me. What's the name of your church? I said, Abide and Love Community Church. He said, is that it? He was looking for a title. I said, no, it ain't it. I said, it's a body love community church, Holy Ghost filled anointed, where we believe praying for people putting their hands on and God healing and living on set and free and let the Holy Ghost move from in our church. That's the end of it. It's amazing how you can shut the devil up. Like that. Oh Lord. I said, where do you live? Oh, I live over. I live in England. I said, well, I used to work in New He said, uh, where do you live? I said, oh, I live south of here. See, we sometimes have to use little words to let God move. He said, yeah, my son lives south. He lives over there off of Chapel Mill Road in Highway 36. I said, well, hallelujah. That's where I live. I said, where's your son go to church? Well, they look, they look in I said, well, I tell you what, since we live in the same community, and I got to go that way anyway, you give me my phone number and I'll take it. All right. I'll take it with me. I said, where does he live? He said, there's a little place on Highway 36 and Chapel Mill Road. It's got this little log cabin. It is some kind of hitching post. 
I said, Faulkner hit some posts. Yeah, that's it. We turned into the first house in the left. He's probably out of where you live. I said, you know what? God's so good. I said, because that same hit you post you talk about, I live right across the street. <laughs> I said, that's how my God works. Sir. That's who we serve. I'm out delivering food. I come across the military. I grew up military my whole life. My dad served almost 39 years, 38 years, 10 months, and 11 days. And I got out, I started talking to the military, and I said, sir, I see the cross on your hat. He said, yeah, I'm a chaplain. And I just said, thank you for what you're doing. Not only for the military, but thank you for the words you're praying over these gentlemen. And he said, it's my pleasure. I used to pastor a Holy Ghost filled with anointed church, and I put my arms right and started hugging on them. I said, where do you live? He said, you probably never heard of it. A little place called St. Augustine. I said, that's in Florida. He said, yeah. And I said, you're currently active in the military then. Oh, yeah, I've been active for 20-something years. I know everybody in the military down there. I said, well, God's so good. I said, because you know in St. Augustine, when you cross that little old bridge with the two big lines on it, he looked at me. I said, when you cross that bridge and you look to the left, and there's two big old flags, the Florida flag, the American flag, and a big old cannonball. I said, there's a little old White House right there. He said, yeah, that's the general's quarters. I said, yeah, a few years ago, a guy and his wife named John Bridges, he was the general there in St. Augustine, Florida. He lived in that house. I said, it's a beautiful place on the inside. He said, you know John Bridges? I said, that's my uncle. He said, boy, this world's a small place. I said, no, it ain't. That's God working even in the midst of the storm. See, God sends people along the way just to pray. God sent Holy Ghost anointed people along the way to touch each other. Touch each other. Amen? I'll get to that in a minute. I was back there in the office. And I was trying to go over my notes. I was trying. But God said that you were sent here because you're a prayer warrior. See, a prayer warrior, as you know, That's a big responsibility. Because you're up, you're down in the middle of the night. In the middle of the day, God may stop you right in the tracks to do nothing but pray. And God said, that's what you've been doing. And God said, Sunday night, when you were out helping, you were praying over this church. see the Holy Ghost lives in you so much that it comes out everywhere. And I mean that in a great, great way. God is about to use you like you've never been used before. God's about to do things in your family like he's never done them before. God's moving right now, even in your children. Right now. See, that's, that's what I heard God telling me. Back in the back. God's moving in the midst of the storm. I ain't preached yet. It's raining. We ain't got a whole lot to do outside today, so just buckle up and hang on. Y'all allow me to do something. supposed to be in the bed at home. But she's so hard headed. She said, I'm going to church. And I can't argue with that. 
because God's using her and about to bust some doors wide open. Yes, amen. Four days ago she had surgery. Four days ago. And she was up sitting up Thursday night. God is about to bust some things in this ministry wide open. Amen. Amen. Plus, I think God knew that I was about to go nervous. <laughs> First thing she said, Brother Terry, when I got in the car, I said, Baby, you okay? She said, I'm hungry. <laughs> I said, Huh. Thank you, Jesus. So we went to that God-forsaken blue out Chick-fil-A and she got her some nuggets. That's my testimony. Lord, have mercy. Y'all hot? Some of you hot, some of you cold. <laughs> Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to jump in each and every one of us to change our life today forevermore. Lord, we thank you, we honor you, we magnify you. In your precious mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. amen, amen. amen. I want to ask you something today. Can you see? Can you see? Yes, Pastor, I can see. I got to church. You know, I rode in the car. I drove my car. I came to church. I can sleep clearly. I can have no problem seeing. Okay, well, I'm going to just ask you that question in a few minutes. I want to ask you, are you looking this morning with your spiritual eyes? Are you looking this morning with your spiritual eyes? Because, see, people today are running to every church to get that word of encouragement. Every person is running to a different church to find out if they can just get a good word, a good motivation speaking word to. People are running to churches because they think if they put in a, an hour's worth of their time, they bought a ticket into heaven. But that's not the case. See, the Bible tells us that we must be saved, set free, and delivered. God has to come into your heart and completely wash away your sins. We understand that. But see, sometimes when we get our toes stepped on, it hurts our little feelings. Well, you know what? I think of it this way. Look and see what they did to Jesus. Look and see what they did to Jesus. If I ran out of a church every time I got my toes stepped on, I'd have been to every church across America. But you know what? I thank God for stepping on my toes. I thank God for breaking my toes sometimes. I thank Him for bruising them from the bone out. Because, see, it allows me to learn how to look with my spiritual eyes. People today, today need to be rooted and grounded like never before. They need to be rooted, and I don't know what in the world is going on with my boys, but it sounds like I'm strained. But we need to be rooted and grounded like never before. I'm going to say that again. We need to be rooted and grounded yes. like never before. Amen. See, because this church can't stand without the pillars on it. Brother Josh, when they build this church, they put corners down here. That's where they start. They start in the corners and they lay the block. That's called the foundation. And see, then they run those walls this way. Once that foundation is set up and hard, then they know that they ain't going to go nowhere. They know that they are building on a solid, firm foundation. Then they start laying brick by brick. You know what those bricks are? Those are the people of child of God coming into the ministry. But you know what that block is? That's called the foundation. That's y'all that's sitting in this room this morning. You got to be built on a solid foundation. And that's built by pillars. Amen? Amen. We've got to have some people that are rooted and grounded 
in this ministry. Amen? We need to open our spiritual eyes. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to be preaching on Abraham. And we're going to be in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 4. Abraham's one of my favorite people in the Bible because he was a man that had so much faith. And if anything, he saw with his spiritual eyes. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Now, I want to ask you a question here. Do you think that he raised his non-spiritual eyes and saw a little community down the street? Do you think he saw what was going on with the people outside? No, what this is talking about is he raised his eyes and saw a distance. He's talking about his spiritual eyes. Jesus, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw spiritually. Amen? After the initial response of here I am, God made sure that Abraham understood his calling. The Lord said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son. I want to ask you something this morning. What would you do if that was asking you? I'm sure Abraham was like, um, I, I don't, I, I gotta, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Do you think We don't look through our spiritual eyes. If somebody said we had to sacrifice our children. Somebody asked me to sacrifice one of my children, I tell them they're crazy. That's my baby. That's who God blessed us with. But Abraham was looking through this a little bit differently. God knew that he had a great calling. And he started looking through his spiritual eyes. Abraham had in the unfailing love of God. That means he loved with everything that he had. He loved God more than anything else. I want to ask you a question here today. I want you to look through your spiritual eyes for a minute. I want you to ask yourself a question. Do you love God more than anything else in this world? I'm going to ask yourself that question. Then I'm going to ask, I'm going to get very specific. Do you love God more than you do your spouse? Do you love God more than you do your children? Do you love God more than you love your job? Your activities, your home, your cars? See, because if we're not putting God first, we don't love Him first. We don't love him more than our other things. But see, when we stop loving God first, those other things become idols. You hear what I'm saying this morning? We must love God first. See, I love that woman right there. I was jumping in front of a moving train at a thousand miles an hour to save her life. <laughs> but that's what I was called to do. Because the Bible says, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I love that woman. I do. I do. do anything for her. And there was a time where I loved her more than anything else in this world. But you know what happened? We fussed. We fought. I was asked to leave. I was like, you can't, she told me you can't sleep in the bed. You gotta... Guys, you're getting in your personal life. Y'all are my personal life. It came to where I didn't want to live without me. She didn't want to live with me. Until I said, God, this something ain't right. And he said, yes, because you don't love me more. You've got to love me more than anything, Shane. Yes, I got on my knees and I said, Father, 
I sin. Father, you make this right with me because I surrender all. And I love you because you give me life. I love you because you saved me. I love you because you changed everything in my life to you. And I said, this love that I love for you, pour an anointing, an anointing love on me for others. Sis, I didn't even understand what I was praying. Because when he dumped it out, he ain't stopped yet. But I love my father more than I do this precious woman that he's vested with. And see, there was something that happened. When I love her more, I mean, when I love him more, our love changed. It would come like this, didn't it? The stuff that we argued about, which was nonsense, it's amazing how those things come up. Do we have a perfect relationship? Absolutely not. My eyes, we do, because there's going to be times where you argue. There's going to be times where you have a strong disagreement. <laughs> Is anybody in here say, well, I don't have my house. Y'all lying in the house of God. <laughs> but he changed me. He opened my spiritual eyes to see that I must love him more than I do her. I must love him more than I do my children. And when that happened, things shifted in my life. There was a different kind of love. It was a true love. It was a sanctified love. It was a Holy Ghost anointed love. It was a faith-filled love. It was an agape love that I love towards my wife because I love him first. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the way we should ask God. So I'm going to ask you again, what eyes are you looking through this morning? We ask God too many questions. Why, Lord? Why, Lord? We're, we're, we've gotten on this band kick of where we're spoiled and things just didn't go our way. Why, Lord, we want, to, we want to throw ourselves down on the floor and we want to kick and scream because it didn't happen just like we thought it should happen. Why, Lord, why, why? God's saying, why not you? Why not you? I remember laying my, on my dad in the hospital as he had passed away. And I said, why, Lord? He was too young. I just got the father that I had been looking for my whole life. And you took him from me. I said that. And God said it was his time. Why not? Suffering no more. Amen. See, when God kicks you in the face with something like that, you have nothing to do but get on your hands and knees and thank him for taking him. See how God works? He turned my madness and my anger into joy and happiness. <clears throat> because see, what I do remember is my dad praising Jesus right down the middle of this church with his hands held high when the doctor said he couldn't raise his hand no more than that. That's the father that I serve. Yeah. See, he left this world praising Jesus. That's the father that we serve. Yeah. God asked Abraham something too precious, but Abraham was ready. See, it was very precious. Isaac was so precious to Abraham. But I, Abraham said, you know what? I've got the faith that would move mountains. I've got the faith in my heavenly father that whatever he's doing, I support it 100%. I've got the faith that can move mountains. That's what set Abraham apart and gave him a calling. Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Did you get that? I can imagine Isaac Laying out, having no idea what was about to happen. And Abraham said, okay, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. Well, that night, 
right before it happened. Become a lamb. The ram coming up out of the, the bushes. Stopping everything. And Abraham seeing that. And falling to his knees. And praising his father. That's what I envisioned. Amen. Abraham was looking with his spiritual eyes. The vision was only for Abraham because he was chosen. And guess what? Today, on January 2023, each and every one of you in here are chosen. Did you get that? Each and every one of you in here this morning is chosen. Brother Harry, you're chosen. God's got to work for you. Sister Pamela, you're chosen. God's got to work for you. Sis, you're chosen. He's got to work for you. Sis, you're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. Sister Ebony. You know why I call her destiny? Because she's got a destiny. That's right. She's got a destiny. But you're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. 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 Why do you think God is doing all these things in your body right now? Because you're chosen. Why do you think Satan attacks you the way he attacks you? It's because you're chosen. Right. Yeah. See, Satan can try all he wants to. But once we're chosen, there ain't nothing going to stop the calling. There ain't nothing going to stop a calling. Amen? I'm speaking to somebody in this room today. It's time we start looking with our spiritual eyes. God has chosen you. There are healings in this room this morning. There is deliverance in this room this morning. Amen? There are people that have been set free from some things in their life. I'm going to tell you something. It's amazing how 2023 came in on the bank. God said, if you want to open your spiritual eyes, I'll open them for you. See, I've been praying. I've been praying about some things. I said, Lord, I want dreams and I want visions. I want both. And I said, send them to me. I said, Lord, I want you to use my hands. Then when I lay on the sick, they're healed. I want you to use my hands and when I lay my hands on people that dead will rise. That's a pretty bold statement to make. Well, I'm pretty bold for the Lord. That's who he made me. So you, you can ask my wife, 28 years of being together in 25 years, do I do anything halfway? I believe if God bless you, you better do it 100%. <laughs> and I believe in 2023, that's what we must be praying. You see, the, the patty cake church is gone. And what's left is speedily going away. Lord, use my hands to lay on the sick. Lord, use my hands to lay on the non-safe. Lord, use me in every way that you would use me. But Lord, most of all, use me up. Use every ounce of me until I'm completely done. And then you can do whatever you want to with me. I'm ready. But I want you to use me until the day they put me in the ground. You use me. Use me. Use me. I had a dream in November. Everybody knows about the burning church. I wasn't the only one that had that dream. There's other prophets that's on Facebook has been telling me other dreams of their sermons. But I had a dream, and God told me that in 2023, something was going to happen in January. We're three weeks in, and I want you to look at everything that's happened. How many people know that tornadoes don't hit in January? You ever seen a tornado hit anywhere in January? Let alone in Griffin, Georgia. But God told me something was going to happen. The 
in such a way that it would turn upside down. I didn't really literally know that it was going to turn the city upside down. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you to something. Get in your car and drive around. Get in your car and pull out this driveway and turn left and go to the red light. Not the stop sign, but the red light. Just stop the stop sign. Look to your right. Up on that big old hill. Somebody can put a cross. I want you to go to Griffin, Georgia and look at people's front yards. They're putting crosses up in people's yards. Why do you think that is? That's because God said I was going to do something in vain. I'm going to put it to you upside down. This number seven in crime. This number seven in people dying, stealing, all these crazy things. I'm going to change it. Did you know that in Griffin, Georgia, there's so much witchcraft here? There's places you can go into and they can look at your hand and tell you what's going to happen. So they say. And believe it or not, there's one right side of the church over here. I can take a look. Right in front of my train depot. You tell me witchcraft ain't real. There's people out to steal, kill, and destroy what God's doing. But see, we're living in a different era. Because we are learning to walk and look with our spiritual eyes. We are learning that when we are called, we must go. We are learning that when God says something, we must do it. When he says go, we go. When he says stay, we stay. When he says do whatever, we do whatever. Amen? Because we have a calling. And this is a new year. This is a new time. This is a new day. God is working in the midst right now. The time is now. The power of God is in the miracles, is in the healings, is in the deliverance, is in the callings. Let us open our spiritual eyes this day. And when we open them, we pray that God never closes them. We have gotten into a place where we have no time for God. Because we, did, we live busy lives. Well, Pastor, I didn't have time to pray today because I had to get up at 5 o'clock and feed the kids and feed the dogs and feed the animals. And then we had to get them to school. Then I had to go to work. You know, by the time I get off, it's dark. And I got to get home. And then I got to get supper on the table. And, I, and then I got to do this. And I got to that. And, you know, the only day I got Saturday to do anything. And, you know, I, on Saturday is my day. That's my day, Pastor. That's going to be the day I get to go do me time. Can I ask you something? When does Jesus have me time? If you ain't got time for him, set your alarm clock a little earlier. Make the long way home. Read your Bible before you go to sleep. Pray and give him some time. Because if we can't open our spiritual eyes, we're nothing. If you were stripped from everything in this world, could you see better? <coughs> I know you don't like me asking this question because we like our personal things. But if you were stripped from everything that you have, Could you see that? You see, if we look through our non-spiritual eyes with the things that we've been blessed with, we're doing it all wrong. God has blessed us so much and we can't stop thanking Him each and every day. It's time to open our spiritual eyes. And Ecclesiastes 7.14 says, In the day of prosperity, be joyful when in the day of the adversary consider God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing 
after him. Put God first. Open your spiritual eyes for what God wants in your life. We have had our eyes closed way too long, and now is a new day. I ask God to show me things, and I'm going to encourage you to ask God to show you different things. Because, see, there's, there's things that go on when we're sleeping. God gives us dreams. And so we've been praying, God, open our spiritual eyes even when we're sleeping. Because, see, when we're sleeping and God wakes us up, write it down. And see, it may not make sense now, but when daylight comes in the morning and you read what you dream about, God's going to open up your spiritual eyes for what he was trying to tell you even in the midnight hour when we were supposedly getting our best sleep. I'm going to tell you something. The closest conversations I've ever had has been in the wee hours of the morning. I'm going to tell you what happens in the wee hour of the morning. Satan sends his imps into your home, and he tries to rob you from that precious sleep. But see, God's already there. You hear me? God's already there. All you got to do is get out of here, Satan. You have no authority over my family. You have no authority over me. You have no authority over my church. You have no authority over my church family. Get out and take hell with you in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> See, that's all we got to do. When Satan tries to attack us, there is no precious name. I preached it last Sunday. Ago. No precious name in the name of Jesus. See, when we say Jesus, all demons in hell tremble. We got to learn to open our spiritual eyes. When the doctor comes in and says, uh, Mr. Brown, we, we got some news. And it don't look good. You know, there's, there's something in your brain. And we can't get rid of it. Unless we go in there and cut your head open and operate on your brain. And, you know, it's a big surgery and it's very very critical and you know that's because that's how doctors talk like I love my doctors I love them, I really do but how many know there's some spiritual filled doctors and there's some non spiritual filled doctors <laughs> and when they say well you know we just, we just when you bust your head open from front to back we go to get the finger you know, based on what the outcome is going to be that's when we open our spiritual eyes and say thank you father we walk out of that doctor's office and say, you know what, Jesus? Because you make it a way right now. I'm healed in your blood. Hey, make people in the parking lot look at you. Make people in the weight room look at you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Because, see, when doctors say they can't do nothing, when medicines don't work, I know that the ultimate physician is about to do a, a, a thing in my head that no man can do. I know that my physician's about to do an operation without me even being cut on. I know that my physician is about to remove this thing without any kind of chemo. And you know what, Lord? And when you do it, I want you to make the doctors so mesmerized by it that they can't explain it. Hallelujah. Well, you know, this and this and this, which they put stuff on paper, nobody understands. And I'm like, okay, what does it mean? Well, they say they can't explain it, but they can't find a brain tumor. They, they, can't, they can't find a brain tumor that was the size of a guy. I don't know if they heard it. They can't find a brain tumor the size of a guy in the front part of his brain. You know why? Instead of walking out of the doctor's office like, well, Lord, I guess you're coming to get me. Bring Elizabeth with you. <laughs> <coughs> I know, Lord, you're coming. And this is it. And I know that I'm going to live in misery until, you know, that day comes. And I'm just going to sit at home and I'm just going to put my feet up and die. Say, I don't give up. 
if you got, I know y'all are the same way, but if your last name is D R O W N, that ain't an option. Is it, Rebecca? See, when something is brought to the surface and it's spoken out loud, and you hear that, man, that's marching orders right there. Amen. That's me saying, okay, God. Because what I tell you, you get up in the mighty name of Jesus. Get up in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, I went to be not too long ago. And we went from this place to that place to this place to that place. We drove all over town. You know, we, we did all these things. But there were periods and times where you had to get up and go to the back and talk to God. For the whole time, I'm saying, in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Lord, these, whatever they're doing, Good reports. Yeah. Lord, when I, I, I mean good reports, I mean healed completely in your mighty name. Because you are our Father. You yeah. already paid the price, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we plead your blood over this situation. Yeah. Do you understand what I said? We plead your blood, Jesus, yeah. over this situation. Yeah. See, you already went to, 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 to Calvary. You've already paid the price. You've already been whipped with the whip of our selves for every disease that we would ever have to walk through. You've already done everything, Lord. And we call it to heal. We're not making you do something. But God says, stand on the word. And the word will set you free. 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 See, a couple of years ago, they said I had that new replacement, so I'll never be able to do that. <coughs> then I'll walk up some steps. But, Amen. free. Free. God did something. Amen. See, it's just the start. I want to ask you, Brother Harry, when they bust these walls out, and we have to add them to the sanctuary. I need one, I have one request. One request only. Well, I have two. I want loudspeakers. And I want wooden pews. Wooden pews, yeah, they got me bolted down. I want them back. <laughs> Because God proved something. Even if it's raining outside. Oh. Well, I don't drive in the rain no good. It's just, yeah. I guarantee you, in the morning when it's raining, they're going to find a way to work. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I would rather have the greatest gift of all than the first time. See, church, I've been to that church. I have been to that church where if you wasn't bringing money in, you wasn't welcome. There wasn't no such thing as running the school bus and picking up children. These children ain't bringing nothing into the church. I've been in that church. I've been in a church where they preach a false doctrine. I've been in a church where pastors don't mind cussing you like a sailor. This ain't that place. See, your pastor was down there Friday morning. Tornado hit Thursday. I was at the trailer park Friday. You think they was going to pay me to go down there? I wanted to help spread God's word to those people. And the lady that run in that place said, no, you ain't welcome here. I said, okay. I said, that's fine. God bless you, and I pray for you. I was mad. I didn't get mad. Because that was me in the same boat she was in. 
But what I will do, and you can't stop me, is I'm going to pray. Because, see, they said there was children, Brother Harry. There was children they couldn't find. And children trapped under trees. And people that was lost, they couldn't find them. And their trailers were flipped upside down. Nobody was, nobody was looking at I said, God, I'm asking you, don't let anybody die. Amen. And do you know what? It came out, nobody was missing. And you go in that trailer park, you can get hard. Nobody died. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Nobody. I'm going to leave you with this one prayer. I'll tell you how God works. Has anybody ever wanted something so bad that you thought it was yours and God said no? I don't have that many fingers and toes. But 1997, 98, somewhere around in there, there was a house down here on the left. Brick house, beautiful piece of property, wooden lot, brand new home. It was built. And there was a man who lived in Jonesburg, Georgia. They had an amazing son. He's a pastor for church. <coughs> in Griffin, Georgia, 1370 North McDonough Road. They were looking at that house. And they wanted that house. But somebody beat them to it. Now, how many times have we ever said, God, why in the world is this person in front of me? You know I'm running late. I got to get to where I'm going. He's keeping me from something. How many times have we ever went into a restaurant and be so many people in there we can't get in? God's keeping you from something. I want you to learn something here. Nothing happens on accident. I don't believe. And being lucky. Amen. There is no such word in our vocabulary. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. That house, the tornado hit it. Wow. The tornado hit that house. And there's holes in that roof bigger than this sanctuary. Mm. <laughs> it took every tree except two. And there's thousands of trees. Wow. Took every tree except two. And those are going to have to be cut down. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you blessed that you didn't get that house done there? <laughs> See, God knew what he was doing when they laid the first brick on the house. God knew what he was doing when they cut the first tree put the house on. That's the God we serve. That's us opening our spiritual eyes and understanding what God's trying to show us. Amen. 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 Amen.